Yeah. Yeah. Good morning. Lovely morning, isn't it? Lovely morning. Blue sky, mate. Blue sky. Good job. I've got my sun gods on, isn't it? <laughs> Out here, sun gods. Straight away on the lanes. Straight back. Straight onto the lanes of High Island. Perfect, isn't it? Where are you taking us today? We're going to go to Humfirth and up her moss. Oh yeah. And then back round to the windmills, Penniston, and then back into the village. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I do my efforts. Just got some strength efforts to do. Not hard, but yeah, like repeats of her moss. And then help you have a tailwind coming back in. <laughs> and a cafe. Yeah, the cafe. <laughs> I've driven over to Barnsley to ride with an old friend, Damien. To ride with Damien whilst he does some sprintables or intervals or six times five to be specific. Specific, But uh, just had a little pissed up at, I've forgotten the name again. Emily Moore Mast. <laughs> Emily Moore Mast. It's Emily Moore Mast, we've just ridden through Emily. And um, yeah, you can see it's from absolutely miles around. Look at the size of it, man. I think the one on the right. Is a, te is a temporary one whilst they're doing works to the one on the left. I don't yeah. know what they're doing this specifically, but yeah, it's, all, it's all lit up. And it's, you can literally just see it from a mile. They see it back from the house. Installing 5G, mate, that's what they're doing. Maybe. Ah. Uh, just doing our good deed for today. Found a wallet on the floor. I'm gonna give it in. Yeah, look. Broadcast television and radio to around 5 million people. So we get our. Television. There you go. And yeah, Sky TV from, from there, yeah. Yeah. Look at the height of it though. Coverage to... spans to Darlington to Lincoln and skipped into the East Coast. <laughs> the tower is the UK's tallest freestanding structure and was awarded a Grade 2 listing building status in March 2003. There we go, History Channel on LC's vlog. How about it? Mate, it's taller than the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew this. That thing is taller than the Eiffel Tower. No wonder you can see it from miles around. It makes a uh, Blackpool tower look like a little yeah. piece of Lego. Like, no. But we've got the biggest tower and then the f smallest roundabout. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, f right, intervals, Damo. Um, no, we've got to get to bloody f home first. This will be a long ride. <laughs> <laughs> if we continue like this. I know. Village is home, which leads us up to the top of Hull Moss. Got you. I actually saw Fred Wright on this climb once. Oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> what are the chances? I waved at him and he was probably just like, no idea what that is. <laughs> Gutted. Just now though, cycling weekly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, look. Demo and, and Fred. Yeah, for those of you who saw my first Barcelona video, the one before last, Damien is the guy who's lucky enough to feature on the whole cover of Cycling Weekly, on the front cover. So yeah, it looks like I'm only filming these days with uh, people who are featured in Cycling Weekly. <laughs> Spat! Um, this is home off. Featured like Tour de France, Tour of Britain. Um, one of my favourite climbs. I'm not good on it, but <laughs> I, I just love the view when you get to the top and across like this. It looks stunning, yeah. It's absolutely stunning. Um, so yeah, we'll go over that, then descend um, onto Woodhead, which isn't great, but we'll head off of that quite quickly to like Dunford Bridge area um, and get over to see some nice windmills. Nice one. But first, um, you got your uh, five, five by six. I've got four more. So I'll go up here four times, turn around. <laughs> We've got to keep the legs spinning in between the efforts, so they're like Sweet. strength efforts, so Easy. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll crack on Let's with that. Go.
So I can't quite believe this, but I've never, never been here before. I've seen it, obviously, as probably most of us have on the tour of Yorkshire and the tour of Britain a few times too. But let me tell you, riding around these roads, absolutely stunning. I don't know how I've never been up this way before. Over that way in the distance, I can see that tower that I showed you before. Not surprising considering it's taller than the Eiffel Tower. But yeah, I've just got Damien behind me. Probably gonna overtake me soon doing some uh, short efforts. even though the weather's closed in. And it's got a bit cold up here. Uh, still stunning, still really, really beautiful. Sunshine over there, not fair. Made it up to the mast, another mast. How was your efforts? Yeah, they were good, start, yeah. They do, they can, you can't like, fall asleep during them, because <laughs> you're basically just doing this at hardly any effort. Not far now. Not far, just descend. Descend back into the village and then that's it, done. Easy. Oh, would you look at that? It's a well deserved day. That's my start. What's this, the local then? This is the local, yeah. Hillary's calf, calf on calf. Outrageous. Yeah, what have you weird. got there? It's like this vegan raspberry, like pecan, flat, oaty, flapjack thing. Naughty. No, oh, it's proper naughty. Uh, so racing is not far away now. It's not now. How have you been best using your time over lockdown? <laughs> um, just focusing on other things, but off bike. Um, so I've been in a lot of core, um, obviously doing altitude thing. Um, but more specifically, I'm really just nailing my nutrition, um, which is off bike, on bike. <clears throat> Um, and like after, basically as soon as I get home. So, so who's your nutritionist? Uh, there's two guys. Um, I mainly deal with Charlie Mitten. Um, they're both ba bodybuilding background, so they can like obviously like really shred weight when they want to. And been working with him all year. Yeah, I value him just as just as much as my coach. Essentially, yeah, he coaches. You know, like what I put in my mouth. Yeah. Um, he tells me literally what to have um, all day. Like you know, literally all day. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> to the point where you're weighing everything, right? Yeah, so for July we wanted to like really hone down and really be specific and literally weigh everything. So it means that nothing goes like <clears throat> like out off camera basically, you know? Like down to oil that you put on your food and stuff like that. I mean, it sounds daft, but it's, 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 it's easy to do, you know, in my fitness pal and, and other apps alike. Um, you know, you just you just basically have a little weighing scale and you make sure you just weigh everything and this time I managed 77 grams an hour um, but he's constantly, want, he's constantly trying to push me up so he said today like try and aim for 90 grams um, of carbohydrates per, per hour And what would that be? Would that be um, like uh, powdered? I like to have uh, the majority of my carbs in my bottles because obviously it's easier, you don't have to like, carry as much um, and I found out that what works for me um, is just white sugar <laughs> um, but literally just it, what? It, yeah, white sugar. So if you like every gram of white sugar is obviously a gram of like is one to one ratio to to carbohydrate. Well, it's cheaper that way, isn't it? So much cheaper. It's like a quid for a kilo. So that keeps keeps me going. Like well, maybe one week. From working with this nutritionist this year, what is the most would you say important thing that you've let take away from this year? Um, I think it is that on-bike nutrition and pre-bike nutrition as well, which is so important. Um, I've learned like a hell of a lot about that. And I think that a lot of riders don't fuel enough for those efforts. And it's the understanding the fact that I now, 
I'm getting more to grips with the fact that I'm doing this effort and therefore I need to be fully fueled to be able to get the, like, the right out of it or like the right result out of it. Um, you know, I once heard that it's like 70%, um, your results are 70% um, in the kitchen and 30% like in, in like gym work or bike work, for example. Um, so if you think about that, you know, you need to, you need to be fueling your engine properly to be able to get like the, the right thing out of it. Uh, I think once any rider um, has the facility to be able to see how much you have to have pre, like sometimes I'm, I'm knocking up to like nearly 300 grams of carbs pre-ride if it's a big ride, um, which is a hell of a it's lot. a lot of food. Uh, it's a l lovely amount of porridge. <laughs> and it's just, it's just it's beautiful. Like, I, you know, I know that I'm going to be able to burn it off and I know it's just pure fuel that's then going to not, I'm going to be depleted by the end of the ride. So again, it's then replacing those glycogen stores afterwards. Oh, it's really look, look, so that's that's 50 grams of carbs. Well, that's 100 there. That's 100? Yeah, and all it is is um, dates, raisins, cocoa powder, um, coconut oil. Um, Homemade brownies? Yeah. Outrageous. Look at that demo. Bit cheeky that, isn't it? Cheeky. Nice ass. Nice bit of ass. Thank Cheers, you. Thank you. Cheers. We're just, we're just looking at the bum on the. <laughs> What's that all about? Well, Andrew says it was modelled on me. And really? I've done three hours for that. Did you? <laughs> well, yeah. Damien, Damien's knocking on the strangers' doors again. I think that's a car, anyway. Cheers for that. No, thank you. That was a mega. Yeah. Great little loot, that. Lovely little loot, eh? There we go. Who's it? So a big thanks to Damien for letting me come over to his gaff and uh, show me around his local roads. As usual, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Ciao.